Hey guys, producer Kyle here. We're getting ready to jump into today's awesome podcast interview with our good friend Hayden Baker. But before we do that, I wanted to let everyone know about a giveaway that I'm currently doing on Instagram. If you head over to Kyle Garrett Music on Instagram, you'll see that I'm giving away a $50 Amazon gift card. All you have to do is click the link in my bio, follow me on Spotify, and then DM me a screenshot proving that you followed and you'll be entered randomly in the raffle. My new song Backseat Driver drops January 19th. Hope you guys check it out. I was reading the other day that it takes at least $1 million to break an artist. That's a ton of change, and it can feel overwhelming. But with social media leveling the playing field, you just need an effective strategy to release your music. Check out Release Rocket to ensure your single does not die after release day. You've already put time, effort, and tons of money into writing and recording your album. Let the guys at Release Rocket keep your new release alive. everyone it's time for the texas toast podcast and this is an exciting one we're going to talk some super duper awesome music to one of my favorites hello hayden baker welcome to the podcast again it's so good to see you helen good to see you again this is what number five number six i think i don't know i know it could never be enough though it's number not enough that's right but you know to me i really think this is probably one of the most important ones and it's like i got emotional listening through the tracks hayden has a new album coming out called barely getting by uh, we're going to talk about the recording process, his thinking. We're going to talk about track by track, some of the um, songs that are on it. But I am mm -hmm. so, I am so proud of you. If by far, Thank this you. is just music for the soul. It gets you going. It speaks to you. And and you just, you did a phenomenal job on this. So how Thank long you. was this in the works? And I know you went with, um, you went, we were at Rosewood, Travis worked with mm -hmm. you and Carrie and Drew. Yep. So let's talk about the making and production of the album. Absolutely. Um, if we're going back to when I started writing some of these songs, this has been about a three-year process, I think. I think um, the one that most recently came out, Is It Cold in Oklahoma, is the oldest. I think that was written in 2021, like in January. So we're about at three years. Um, and the recording process was the only difference in this one really was um, I actually, I did play on this full album. I played all the guitar parts. Um, which was a new challenge. Usually I'm playing like the solos and the the lead stuff. And then a guy by the name of Bryce Clark, who plays for Aaron Watson, would come in and do um, all the rhythm and the textural kind of ear candy things. And I got to learn a lot from him over the past few years of kind of how to attack that and put on a bunch of different hats in the studio as opposed to just being, you know, the Brad Paisley clone <laughs> in there. <laughs> and uh, I, I tackled that challenge on this record. So all uh, 13 of these songs, every guitar part is me. So that was super fun. So you get into the studio and all these start coming along. What was, let's just, let's take it track by track. I do want to talk about Is It Cold in Oklahoma and, and yeah. talk about your voice on that and how you just sang. I mean, like I was, it's just so intense. It's just amazing. So tell me about the concept behind that. You said you wrote it like three years ago. It's one of the oldest yeah. ones on there. So the inspiration for that one. For sure. I wrote that with a guy by the name of Jake Doucette, who you've probably heard his name before. He's uh, He's been a co-writer of mine on a couple songs already from a few years back. He writes with uh, John Stork, Jake Worthington, some of those guys as well. Fantastic musician and writer. And I was living in College Station at the time, and my girlfriend was living in Oklahoma. She was getting her master's up at OU at the time. And she just said something about it it's probably the thing was snowing up there or whatever she's like man it's cold in oklahoma and i said all right i'll be back in a few hours that sounds like a really good song title and i got my buddy jake on the phone and we hopped on zoom and knocked it out in a couple of hours and it just kind of you know sat around for a few years while i was up in nashville writing and when it came time to record this album i said this one's got to be on it it's just it's too like classic country it, it really speaks to me so so we put it out as one of the first singles yeah, it's a very good one. And of course, that one is out. We did talk about that one here on the podcast. And then another one is Reason to Run that you've already released. And I love the twist on the reason there. That's just yeah. genius. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I wrote that with Trent Woman. That one's also pretty old. I think that was my first trip to Nashville um, to write. That was one of the first songs I got with Trent. And I had an idea for, you know, something along the lines of uh, Reason to Run or I'm, 
looking for a reason to run or something like that. And he goes, what if it's, I can't find a reason to run like this guy's, you know, this, this gypsy soul has finally found a woman that's going to slow him down. And I was like, that's great. And then we rolled with that Keith Urban kind of guitar riff and it, that one came together pretty quickly too. And then another one everyone can look forward to <clears> as this podcast airs coming up in just a few days, leave the rest up to you. I just call that kind of a ooh la la song. Oh man. Yeah. And it's just like, they're all so good. It just gets better and better. <laughs> yeah. This is just one of those, you just kind of play back, snap your fingers, <laughs> you know, get your groove. And that one, it's a different, it's a different uh, vibe for me for sure. And it was fun. Um, vocally, it was fun playing a guitar on it like that 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 guitar the guitar parts in this song don't sound like me at all which i think is very cool it's very john mayer uh bluesy it's kind of got like a sitting on the dock of the bay sort of vibe and uh i wrote that recently. i want to say it was early last year with uh barrett baber and kyle sturrock up at uh we were up at seagale running that day and um they had that idea and we just kind of ran with it and just we're just keeping this whole vibe going the whole time so yeah excited to get that one out yeah and uh, and another one we're going to move to next is um let love do its thing i this i i loved this one i love the change up it had about about two and a half minutes into it but mm -hmm. um i give our hearts a break sometimes just let love do its thing oh, i love that's it that's right that's right that one is that's probably my favorite on the album um as far as you know the commercial leaning sounds go uh, songs go i guess uh that one's probably going to be one we send out to radio and, and do all that. And it, it comes out in March. It'll be the last song that releases before the album uh, drops in April. But yeah, that one, actually, I wrote that one myself. I was on a plane back, coming back from Nashville a couple of years ago. And that was one of those moments where I just, I kind of had the melody in my head. I wrote the, pretty much the entire song in my notes on my phone. And I remember I was I was texting my girlfriend on like the Southwest Wi-Fi. You can like iMessage, you know, from the plane. And I was like, hey, can you look and see if there's a, a song title called Let Love Do Its Thing out there already? <laughs> she goes, no, there's not. And I went, okay, perfect. I'm going to roll with this one. And I got home, grabbed a guitar just to kind of, you know, put the puzzle pieces together and make sure what I had in my head was, you know, decent and a good song. And it just all clicked into place. And that one's. We've been playing that one live for a couple of years, actually. So I'm excited to get that one out to the world for sure. Mm -hmm. Good one. And then um, moving on to another one, Something I Can't Do. That's another beauty, Life Without You, another kind of love, mm -hmm. love. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that one's, that was very sweet. Uh, that was with uh, Sam Banks and Cody Atkins wrote that last year and fell in love with it immediately. I mean, there's... The work tape of that song, actually, we're sitting on Cody's front porch and like wind, like you can hear leaves rustling and wind blowing through. And it's, I, I might like find a way to get that mixed and mastered and put that out at some point. It's that's a that's a really, really cool, really special song. And I'm, I'm excited for that one, too. OK, now the one that blew me away and it was the first one I actually clicked on when when the files came over to me, the title cut barely getting by. Are you kidding yep. me from the <laughs> first to the last note, to the everything in between. Oh, Hayden, that Doesn't is so oh, good. It's, it's so good. It's so good. I am so that that is the song that I've been wanting to record for six years. I, I was trying to find it, what it was, what just felt the most like me, and the easiest and the most fun to play, and it's that one. That's another uh, Sam Banks co-write. Uh, him and I were. We, I just said, I had, I want to write, we're both guitar pickers. I was like, let's write a freaking modern day working man blues, poor man's it, song, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it turned out being the title track. And yeah, it was, I mean, that one, that's the best guitar tone I think I've gotten. That's the best I've played. The best I've sang too. I, I think that, I think that's my favorite recording I've ever, I've ever put down. And I am stoked to get that one out. Yes, it, that's one for everyone to be excited about, to be so ready when the album drops, because that that one, it's mind blowing. Um, loved every minute. And I did have a note next to it. Hard work and man, I had that note. Yeah. Next to it. And speaking oh, of that, you that do. Song. I noticed that you on the titles under the album, you do have a cover of South of Santa Fe on the album. I do. I do. I'm glad you caught that. That one, so I, I love Brooks and Dunn, obviously. You know, I, I've written with Ronnie and, and had the publishing deal with him and, and everything. And uh, I've always, always been a huge fan of him. And 
the last album we did in 2020, we had a cover of, of Brad Paisley's I'll Take You Back. So I was like, okay, let's let's pull a cover out for this one that, you know, some people actually might know. It might be like one of those, oh, I remember that. But let's do it way different than their version. So this this version is uh, it's it's like it's kind of stripped down, slowed down, very subdued, and we took a completely different approach to it. Uh, the guitar in it is completely different and real spooky. And um, and I actually got two of my best friends, uh, Adam Hill and Wade Hill, the Hill brothers, um, who Adam plays fiddle for Josh Abbott Band now, and they sang back up and Adam played fiddle on it. So they're going to be featured on that one too. It is it is very cool. So as you're stu in the studio and you're recording and working with all the amazing people at Rosewood, as things started coming together, what was going through your mind? Uh, I'm I'm blessed and, and humbled to be here. And, um, you know, it's I, my favorite. I think my favorite thing to do in this business is record, is go to the studio and just create something out of nothing and, and be collaborative with, with guys like Travis and guys like Drew and uh the musicians there it's just that's my that's my happy place like when we're holed up at rosewood for 14 hour days two days in a row um i have no complaints so i i wish i could afford to do it every week <laughs> but uh the kind of you you take those moments as they come and and just and enjoy them i can't wait to get back and do it again that was one thing i was thinking about is how intense and how ama musically amazing it had to be in those walls when you were recording this. It was very special. There was a lot of just, there was a lot of high five and moments, a lot of, uh, I mean, there's one, one of the really cool things, if I can nerd out in, in the mm -hmm. guitar department, and this especially shines through on the title track, is I, I told the guys I wanted to get like the best possible guitar tone that I could. And I hadn't felt like I'd achieved that yet. And so we got super creative and typically like the easiest way to like mic a guitar amp is you just put a couple microphones on the speaker cabinet, you know, a ribbon microphone and like a condenser and that's, you know, that's it. And you can blend those and, and whatnot. We took it a step further where we did those two. The, the, the amp cabinet was in like a little acoustic room with a big door that opens up to the tracking room. We put two room mics on either side of the tracking room and then we put a uh, condenser mic right on my picking hand for the electric guitar to oh. get the the pick attack to add a little bit of clarity. So, I mean, just little things like that, like coming up with that and hearing how it sounds coming through the the, the monitors and the tracking room is just, I, I, I'm thrilled with how this record is, is turning out. It's not done yet. The ones that you haven't heard still have some tweaks that have to be made to it, but um, I'm thrilled. I can't wait for this thing to come out. I know that's what it, I'm glad that I got to hear what I got to hear, but I'm kind of glad that I'll have a surprising moment when once the whole album comes out to hear some of the other ones, because you've got um, quite a few. How many total tracks are on there? I think it's going to be 14. It's 13 songs, but there's I think one of the songs is going to kind of have like a prelude track. It's just kind of guitar jams. Um, and that you will be surprised because there is something that there is a special guest that is going to be on the album that I have not announced yet. And it's, uh, it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so you will have that to look forward to as well. <clears throat> See, again, Hayden, Hayden has this waiting and, and more of that excitement. You just, you know, you're just listening to your album and I'm not a musician, but like I'm in the broadcast business here and it's just so motivating when you, when you get to listen, like knowing you, like I know you and, and watching you grow so much the last few years and then to get yeah. to hear that it's, it's just motivating for anybody in life to do bigger and do better. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that because it's, uh, that, I mean, that's the, that's the main reason I do this is to, you know, hopefully inspire somebody else along the way and, and, uh, and see them kind of get off the ground and, and running in this business. So I appreciate that. Yeah, you're, you're a big inspiration. So lots of live shows out there and let's, let's talk about something and then we'll go back and wrap up some more with the album, but yeah. I do want to, Oh, I was, I was just so um, heartbroken for you when I saw what happened to you when you played the green hall show with Aaron Watson, but then yeah. it turned out it made it uh, again, human kindness. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, you know, blown away and Aaron's always been so good to us but this was just above and beyond and one thing that 
that stuck out to me when I said it. And this is not to say that I'm like, you know, Mr. Perfect and I do everything right. But one thing that I, I try to do uh, most of the time is, is treat people with kindness and with respect. And when, when Aaron made that gesture from the stage, I was just, I told my, my, uh, my dad, I was like, look, that right there is why you treat people with kindness and respect because they'll, they'll pick you up when you need it, you know, and I needed it. <laughs> I was in, I, I, I lost about six, $7,000 worth of stuff, uh, like personal stuff, um, as well as equipment and everything. And I was, it's the holiday season. I did not know how I was going to get that stuff back. I was, I was like, I, I can't afford to replace some of these things. And boy, he came through, his fans came through. I had plenty of, of friends and family members come through and I still am just like so humbled by that. And like I said, in, in the post I made, I will definitely pass that along when the opportunity comes for me to help somebody else. Yes. And, and yeah, that was, that was quite, the timing was, was not very good. And, and then like yeah. thinking too, you just play green hall. I mean, what, what mm -hmm. a great big thing. And then you come out to yeah. everything being smashed and gone. Yeah. And I even like, it was so, it wasn't funny. It kind of is now, but like when, cause we were doing back-to-back -back nights at, at green mm -hmm. and after the Saturday night show, I was, I was this close to just leaving everything there. Like I was like, oh, I'll just leave it back here with Aaron's stuff. And in, out loud to myself, I said, no, it'll be safer with me. <laughs> and I take it home and it all gets stolen. So, but everything wow. happens for a reason. And um, we've pretty much, I've got a few things still in the shipping queue, but uh, here in the next couple of weeks, we should get everything replaced. So. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. So happy to hear yeah. that. Okay. So I got to talk about another little thing that you do with some other friends of mine and uh -huh. ours here at the podcast. This whole thing with you and Drew Fish and Trent Cowie and Nate Burnham and David Lewis getting together. And I know y'all yeah. had posted some videos with, an, I mean, y'all are like my dream show to go to. I know you're going to be playing at the table at Madeley, uh coming yeah. up from Conroe next month. Tell me mm -hmm. about you guys doing that and how far are y'all going to take it? Because y'all are amazing <laughs> together. And all of your personalities, like y'all are all some of my favorites. Awesome. I, I love hearing that. It came together just super organically. Like um, I, you know, I knew Trent and I knew David and then Drew knew Nate and Drew and I kind of knew each other. And he, oh man, I'm trying to remember how it started. I think it was when he invited us up all to his folks uh, ranch up in East Texas and we just took a weekend hanging out, filming content, playing golf, whatever. And we all kind of hit it off. And I think it was Drew just had the idea that, hey, let's do a couple of these like five man jam shows on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday when we're not booked. And, and yeah, like you said, it is fun. It is a blast. I mean, you've got David and I, you know, play all the lead guitar stuff and we're having fun there. And all of us are singing harmonies that prior to, us getting together i'm not sure most of us myself included knew we could do you know and it's just kind of it's just one of those fun organic things i don't know how far we're going to take it uh it's, it's hard to get five artists schedules lined know, up to do some I of know. these things but I it's know, but, it's a uh, blast when we get to for sure and i'm i dropped something i'm excited for for the the conroe show i can't wait for that one and the date on that it's during the week it's like a thursday right I think so. I think it's on the 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 leap year day on, on the 29th of February. I think that's, that's when it, it is. Yes. Okay. Well, anyway, or is that when at the, anyway, anyway, long story short, yeah. if you haven't heard these guys play together, you can look it up on social media somewhere and find it on one of you. I mean, I wish we could like drop a little tidbit of y'all singing yeah. together because it's so amazing and all y'all are just standouts. And then you and David will be at the Kenny store also in a day coming up this month. Yeah, so uh, us two and uh, Scotty Alexander is another guy who I've befriended yes. over the past mm -hmm. couple years. And my goodness, you talk about talent. It's, that guy's got too much of it. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, but we we really hit it off. And, and he actually lives just a few minutes from uh, down the road from me here in uh, South Austin, Buda area. So we get to hang out more now and, and play some golf and write and whatnot. But um, we've been trying – for the for a couple of years now to get a show with the three of us, me and David and Scotty, because we're all guitar players. And um, I just, I knew it would be a blast. And sure enough, we got one booked at the Kenny store. 
And I think there's only a few tickets left. I think it's almost sold out. And see, I better I better make up my mind on that one because I've been yeah. wanting to head to the Kenny store because that's actually my home stomping grounds. Kenny store. Yeah. Austin County. Okay. You know, well, you know, I grew up in Sealy. So. Right. Wow. That's that's a good one. So I better make up my mind. And it's good because it's like it's on a Wednesday, right? Yes, it's on a Wednesday. So that's another thing, like just these little side uh, project things, you know, with the three of us and with the five man jam, those rules, they're fun. They're, like, it's just, we'd be doing the same thing if we were just hanging out together in the living room somewhere. So it's nice to get out and do it on a stage for some folks and, and uh, put on a show. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. Yeah. And you put you, and then I can only imagine you and Scotty Alexander together and throw in David Lewis. That is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of guitar notes played on that stage and, uh, and I'm sure Scotty will bring his fiddle too. And, cool. and yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled because I've written with both of those guys. So we'll, we'll play some songs that we've written together as well too. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. And of course with David, that's a home venue for him as well. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. So what else, what other, I'm just sorry. I had to cover those. I just, I had to, I had to, I had to get your attention and, and just, Put some stuff you in got your it. while I had you while I had your full attention. So what other big shows do you have coming up? Oh man, we've got um we've got our the January show we do every year. Uh we play for the, the Houston Rodeo Calf Scramble Committee. Uh we play their their committee party. And I think that's next weekend. That's always fun. I think this is our fourth or fifth time doing it. So we've got that one over at NRG Center. I'm very, very excited. I'm a big sports fan. I'm a big Astros fan, big Texans fan. We got a big game this Saturday. I have my new sweatshirt got I got it? for Christmas. It's a Space City one. Come on. I love that. So we, I'm, I'm a huge, huge Houston sports nut, and we got the call to um, be the entertainment for the Houston Sports Awards uh, at the end of this oh, month. Oh, shut up. That's so, awesome. So, yeah. Amazing. So I'm, I don't know who I'm going to get to meet. I just know guys like – like Kyle Tucker's up for an award, Jeremy Pena, CJ Stroud, the Texans quarterback, um, Lance McCullers is hosting it. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to bring a lot of baseballs to get signed. <laughs> I'm super, yeah, super you thrilled are, You that. are, you are outside of music. You're the baseball guy. <laughs> I am. And I, I'm a huge sports fan. It was a tough year last year, losing to the Rangers. Um, but, you know, I think we got a good squad coming back this year and man, the Texans, we win this weekend. We're in the playoffs. Look baby. at them. You know what's funny I'm is so like I, excited. I never true like I, everything's baseball for me. Like I, I keep stats and I, I, I mean like every game's DVR'd or I'm watching it. Oh, yeah. I keep up, and you, and I usually neglect football a little bit, but I actually have been keeping up with the football and the Texans, and I'm I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, I'm. They're fun to watch. CJ is the hopefully he's the guy, man. Um, so we've got. We've got that. We've got the song swap with David and Scotty over at Kenny's store. And uh, February's got a few shows. I think we got Galveston and uh, the Stockyards in Fort Worth on the books. We'll be doing mm -hmm. some stuff, I'm sure, for the, the Houston Rodeo cook-off and, and that kind of thing. So it's coming together, and we're working on getting a couple album release parties in April. We've got, I think, one pretty much booked. Um, the main thing for me this year, well, not the main thing, but one of them is I want to play at home a little bit more. We didn't we didn't get to play in, in the Houston area last year as much as we usually do, um, which I think was a good thing for sure for us to branch out because we, we get to play all over the state last year. But it's nice to come home, and um, we're going to be focusing on getting some more of those. I think we have one confirmed already uh, that's on the calendar in March. It's at the Los and Terra Central Green um, in, in Katy. So we'll be playing some stuff for the hometown folks. Oh, that's good. Good stuff yeah. right there. Yeah. Well, I love talking about the sports stuff. And I was going to ask you, that was my question. Let's go back to the album. And um, mm -hmm. and just again, I just want to stress since I got, I didn't get to listen to the whole thing. Hayden sent me yeah. over some tracks and I got mm -hmm. to listen. I'm telling you, it's absolutely amazing. But my question was, what's going to be the big you know, like grand release party. I guess you'll let more details out on that as it uh, gets closer. Yeah, we're working on a couple, actually. I want to do one in, in Houston uh, at home and um, working with the folks over at Shiner because we, uh, we brought That's them cool. on as a sponsor this mm -hmm. past year, and they've been great. So we're working on getting one set up with them over here in the Austin area, and um, hopefully we can get one, you know, maybe in College Station back at the old stopping grounds, something like that. But those details will be coming out very soon for sure. 
Well, the album is barely getting by. And it actually, the drop date on it, release date is April 12th, 16th, April 12th, 12th April 12th. Yeah. And uh, that is, it's, it's going to be everybody's go-to. And I can only imagine like, especially as the weather starts warming up and we get into summer, cranking up some of those songs, especially barely getting by. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you what, and I can't, I mean, we're, um, we got another rehearsal with the band next week before our, our first show of the year work. We've been working up some of these new ones, barely getting by included. That one, I think that's going to be our show closer. I think Barely Getting By is. Boy, that, I am out of breath at the end of that song. That was one of the ones where I had to like, I really had to practice on. It's it, These are fun. These are just fun to play. Like, and that's what, that's what we, I feel like we as artists, you know, strive to do is, is record and write stuff that, that the fans enjoy and that can help get our name out there, but also that we enjoy, that we are excited to get up and play every night. So I'm definitely feeling that for these songs. Okay. I think that says it all. Well, Hayden, thank you so much for joining us to talk about the album. Looking forward to it and we'll be keeping up and hopefully I'll make one of those two shows we just talked about. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm sure we'll get to talk to you guys again before the album drops, hopefully, because like I said, there's some more surprises that have not been announced yet that I'd love to chat okay. with y'all about. I love it. Always something else to look forward to. Thank you, Hayden Baker. That's it.